it's TA fishing time again and you know me or you should do by now I'm not one of those heavily sponsored anglers that absolutely has to produce in case your boss fires you I can do exactly exactly what I want but it means I'm up against it because I'm fishing and filming on my own all the time therefore the chances of me catching go down somewhat and yes indeed I do have the blanks guys if you're not doing anything else Sit back, watch this film, it does at least give you an insight into Graham's mind, how it works, how the cogs turn, and how I try, dismally, unfortunately, to catch a catfish. Or do I? Need to watch the whole film, guys. Enjoy. Well, guys, it's welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. I'm here at Finch Farm on a hunch. I ain't going to be quiet because they've got a massive. Hi Mac 360 or something over there digging away. I don't know what they're doing to be honest, but it's going to be noisy. I was going to do an all night. They've given the most horrendous forecast coming in of rain about four o'clock. I can see it on those raggy sort of clouds over there. There's guys fishing over there. This is the forecast and this is the lake. There's nobody on the catfish lake, which I quite enjoy, but is that because of the weather or what? Who knows? Anyway, I'm going to give it a go. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to bung some ground bait in here. In there, I've got a mix of ground, but I haven't got a lot. I'm mixing it. I want to make it quite hard, the ball, if, like there's a pellets. I'm going to put them in because I want the small fish nibbling away on that. If I put it in loose, if I was fishing for the small fish and I put it in loose, you know, they're going to eat it. If I was catching small fish, roach, rud, bream, I would be using it loose. I want it quite hard so it lasts a long time. That's to nibble away at it. And while they're nibbling away, they got their heads down nibbling like this. They're not looking over their shoulder, are they? They're not looking over their shoulder. Along comes Mr. Catfish, kaboom. He takes them. After that, he gets confident. He starts swimming around looking for more kabooms. And then he finds my hook in there, takes it, and he gets a kaboom. That's the theory. Now, Mick, the owner here at Finch, said, try these. It's a pack of roach, because obviously these catfish feed on the small fish that are in here. And I've got to be honest, I don't think, I think I've tried half sections of roach, good for Xander, but I'm going to thaw those out and I'm going to fish probably a couple of those and I've got lunch of meat as well, good old fashioned lunch of meat. There's a little bit of weed in here, just coming up in the margins, probably going to put one bait in the middle, probably one down the side and one just across there. Now, I could cast way down there, couldn't I? That's great, but if I hook a catfish, there's a wee bed round to the left, lilies, he takes and hangs a left and goes round there, it's all good night Vienna, because I can't get too up and over all these rushes here to pull him out. There's the lilies. If I come here, guys, can you see? Let me go up high. There, up there. Can you, can you see those lilies there? I don't need them getting into that, but they're going to be around those lilies anyway. We'll see how we go. I could fish it from that side. Same situation. I could cast them over there up into here but I just figure this gives me an option of either side of the island over there they've tuned down the oxygenating bubbler there because the water's obviously pretty warm that's why that, that's why this bit of algae is coming up down here same stuff I got on my fish pond so let's get this ground bait out I see somebody else has been here carp fishing with boilies. Sorry, floating pop-ups. Right, rig up time. That can be working. I always like to get some bait in first. That can be working and uh, I'm going to get set up. And I've got a couple of rods here that I actually bought from Mick's second-hand tackle centre that he's having done up there. And we'll find out if they're any good, won't we? If not, I'm taking them back. Right, you probably see, I can't, <laughs> this is like concrete and asphalt, I can't get the backrest in so I'm going to use the uh, trolley there, sack barrow, for my backrest. It's terribly in my age, I still get the panic trying to get that first bait in the water. So look, what I've done is, I'll put some small pellets in here, some old trout pellets because they're already in, they do catch on big halibut pellets in here. So I mean they're probably all going to get eaten but at the end of the day, I work on the premise that the small fish attract the bigger fish. 
bit of litter there in the bin. So let's open one of these roach up. There's ice in this one, so if I get two out, put two in with the sandwiches, keep them cool. They're thaw out. Right, hand might tell. This is quite handy, leaving this. I could build a little tray there, couldn't I? Thinking of it. So what I've got oh, is about I don't know what this is. That 15 pound line. These butt rings I love because not only can I see to get through them, but you could post a Jack Russell through there all the way out. They're big. I love it. I'll tell you about the rods later. Just using single barbless hook. Just a length of braid there. A treble A shot. I'm virtually free. Well, I am free lining. A roach, which will probably float at the moment. I'm going to hook it just through the back because I want the hook point clear. If I hook it in the tail and he takes it here, I'm going to strike a miss and vice versa. If I normally hook between the jaws just there, you know, a small catfish, say five to eight pounds, could take it there, move off with it, I strike and miss it. This way, hopefully, I've got a sort of 50 50 chance. As you can see, there's Mr. Roach, and it's a natural fish in there. I mean, I've caught on loads of different stuff in the, uh, over the years, but now, main thing is the drag, because it's sort of hit and hold, and if I get one of the monsters in here, and there are some big ones in here, it's pretty much game over. This one, I've got a fish. Just where I put the ground bait there. Oh, see this well? There's a small roach there. That could be a catfish chasing the small roach. Now overcast, I'm going to draw it in slowly, slowly, slowly. Just let it sink. It's got ice in it, so it's going to be slow sinking. Just, I can't really tighten up to the sink the line, so it's got to I just sink the line a bit. You can see it just there, hopefully. Sink in. Now it's below the surface. It won't get affected by the wind. I just want to tighten up to it slowly. Ease that bait runner off. I've been carp fishing with it, so got it on quite tight. Okay. On go the dreaded noise machines. Now I was going to tighten up here very, very slowly, just there. All right, I've now got tension. The weight of this bobby might, might drag the roach back, I don't know. Now, hopefully eventually it's going to settle there. I've got a quite a short drop there. And if I'm sitting in a minute when I get set up here, I'm probably not going to use a bait runner, I'm just going to fish straight locked on and as it goes up I'm going to hit it. What you can do with barbless hooks and baits you don't want falling off and they will fall off. Where's it going? You put your dead bait on like this and you get a little piece of rubber band, just a section of rubber band and pop that over the point of the hook, just like that. Hopefully you guys can see this there. So there's a, there's a little rubber band there, just a section, and that'll help hold it on, otherwise it just, just rolls off. So then I'm going to flick this guy out there. They don't cast particularly accurately like this when they're hooked crossways like that. But look, I'm only lobbing it out there. Go ahead a little bit further left. I've no idea whether the cats are going to come out to play with this weather or they're just going to get locked joys. See how I mean? Now I'm casting left and right, I want to go in the middle. There. Pull him back a bit. And sink the line. It's important to sink that line there, otherwise the wind's going to pull on it if it does come up. I mean, at the moment there's no wind, so it really doesn't matter. And I'll just wind up like this and just tweak it. There's a fish move there, I wonder if that was a cat. Just tweak it. Same old. Check the drag's loaded. You want to back up without putting pressure on your base so you don't pull it out of position. Move these little bits because sometimes you get the wind in these and they'll blow on it and bits of grass. I 
I'm going to tighten up here a bit. On goes. Now that'll drop back under its own weight, you see, until it until it pulls up there. That is an excellent way. You're just sitting watching takes where the line enters the water on a calm day. I'll probably get my other camera lens and show you, and you can zoom in on that. And uh, you, you'll see that way, way more sensitive. You can get tweaks on that before you even get a registration on a bite here. Okay, I'll show this one. I probably showed it before. Piece of lunch of meat, quite a biggest cube there. Now you could push the hook in and just lob it out, but it's probably going to slide off. So I'll get myself one of these little baiting needles. It's got a hook right on the end there. Going to push it right through the centre as best I can. It's just basically a way of hairing a piece of meat. Now get a loop of line there. You see that? Put it in the loop. Pull the loop right through. Just one side of it. Just one side. I'm holding on to. Look, there's the other side. See it? And you see, loose two tag two tag ends, and here's the loop. So I want to hold that tag end that's got a little knot on it, just like that. Pull that right through the loose. Tie yourself an overhand sliding loop like this, just like that. Give yourself a little piece of twig or grass, blade of grass. Pull that down, and then your tag end. So you've got it like that. Pull it tight, and this it just gives you a bit of support. Look, see there for casting, just like that. Casting, I mean, it's just a throw, really. Then, all I do, just my way of doing it, you, you, can, you can fish it here, you can fish it right up tight wherever you want. I'm going to fish it quite close because there are look, there's big catfish in there, but it's also smaller catfish, which I'm going to say might be five pounds. I'm up for catching anything now, just a couple of couple of turns on there just to get it secured to the bend of the hook. Just like that. So it's tied snugly to the bend of the hook. I just snip off the tag end, put the tag end in your tackle box so you can sort it out later throw it away. And there, as you can see, is my lunch of meat hair rigged. Now, I used to be hair rigging crossways on a bigger piece. Again, like the roach, you don't know which end they're going to take it. But for a small piece like this, I figure, look, boom, they should, they should have the hook. This one I'm going to throw up the right, close in. Now, I'll put some ground bait balls there. I've got to watch that overhanging bit there, let's try it, I'm going to cast, and then I'm going to be the line back up underneath those rushes, give it a minute or two to sink, there's nothing on that except the lunch of meat, so they shouldn't feel a thing, sink the line, check the drag, in the rest, on goes my cut down, <laughs> my critically balanced <laughs> I love that word, critically balanced. We're going fishing, guys. My critically balanced cut down washing up bottle top, which should be enough if I switch it on, just to give me indication of a bite. There we go. Okay, guys, we're set. The clouds are coming in. I'm okay for a minute, but I'm going to have to set my base camp up back here somewhere. It's not going to be pretty. A first sandwich, I think. And get the old nappy changing mat out. Funny how they don't ask you to have these for roach. A roach mat. Or a dace mat. You need a miniature one, don't you? A dace mat. A perch mat. Alright, assuming it's going to be used. Hopefully not going to blow away. I have to work out which way that wind's going to be blowing because while I'm going to be using the shelter, look, I've got a regular body, but I'm probably going to use the IMAX shelter, which is a beach shelter. I use beach fishing, 
I might give that a go. Into the nose bag we go. Catfishing is a waiting game. Could be a blank. I'm looking for one fish today. I've done loads and loads of work. I was going to come here. Oh, let's not let's not waste these. They're just leftovers. We have no to give them a few sample cubes. Probably get picked up by the uh, bream. Yeah, I've worked really hard for like three or four days for this. I wanted to do Wednesday night to Thursday. No, weather was horrible, jobs to do. Right, high pressure coming in. Uh, Thursday, right, I'll do Thursday night. Then it's just given a horror story of, of weather. I thought, you know what, I cannot be bothered. And I can't film in the middle of the night and the rain pouring down, it's no point, absolutely. Put yourself, would probably catch fish, probably would get a catfish. Stayed here all night. But I just think, I don't need to get wet. I don't need all the gear, but I'll probably get wet anyway. But I'm gonna stay as long as I can. But four o'clock, it's now 12, so look, I don't exactly ever put a full day and only get half days. That's all I can uh, afford in time scale. I have to put the all-nighter off for another trip, but I might get lucky. You know what, fishermen are like, you just might get... No, nobody else is here. It's just enjoyable, there's no one here. Maybe there's nothing being caught, that's why they're not here. Well, I've quickly grabbed the other camera because when I was walking down here, in the other section, there's a little pool up here. They get predators in there, they get pike. You think, oh, there's no pike in there. Well, let's go and see if this one's still laying there. I'd love to get it before this rain comes in because I won't be able to film it otherwise. I never like to uh, neglect looking at these little pools, like this is really overgrown. But very often you can actually see carp in there as well. There's another little hole here. Now, a couple of years ago this was all this was all cleared out and I can remember picking off carp over in the back there. So tempted to come up here with floating crust. He was he was down there somewhere. Oh I got him, he's just on the weed. Hang on a second. Well, I am so cosy in here. Trouble is, I feel like I should have a, a big tripod with a pair of beach rods out there. It feels really weird having my beach shelter on a freshwater lake, pool, pond, creek, whatever you want to call it. No takes yet. 12.45, time's getting on. I'd like to have a beep or two. What I'm gonna do is just try and perk them up a little bit. I've got regular trout pellets here and if you get a lighter catapult because I don't want to send them flying off into the rushes that's no point I want to be fairly accurate with it you can get different elastics on your catapults I've mentioned it before soft one I probably actually want a softer one than this a matchman's catapult and just ping some out and scatter some pellets out there so I've got a feeling it's almost my lunchtime it ought to be their lunchtime as well I'm going to ping a few pellets out there let's do it so this is a lightweight catapult, thin elastic ping, and also flexible arms to help absorb it. It's like shredding a little bit there. Be careful, don't use this a lot, they just perish. Right. It's just, get a few pellets, look. It's just an oily, fishy smell in the water. See how far this catapult goes, and this is just a lightweight one, guys. A little bit farther, some power in it. Ping. That's where I want to be on the point there. Of course, a small fish could eat these as well. I realise that, but it's just... It's just putting a bit of a smell in the water. That's better. You never know, do you? That went miles, Graham. It's obviously an art to pinging these out. I'm gonna get a scattering of more of those out there. I feel like one of those guys when I've got this sleeve thing on, 
Instead of tipping them out, I put my arm down here. I thought I was going to investigate a cow. Like you see in those vets programs. I'm sure the small fish are bream and that would go nuts for these fish. Just scatter them around a little bit there. It might help, and I'll tell you something else I've just found. In my uh, box is this. I've got a variety of catapults in there. I won't be putting it on my sandwiches, boys. Salmon paste. Best before 1853. Right, let's open this up because that surely can be mixed in that ground bait. There's nothing fishier than salmon paste. Let's get some of that out, stir it all up. I've obviously made fish paste. Uh, not sandwiches, no, no. From this, on a previous film, like I remember doing it, have a look on the playlist. How to use paste baits. Paste baits very effective for tench, chub, barbel, carp, predominantly. You used to use paste baits a lot, yes. Wow, that smells nice. That's going to kill the old COVID, I should say. Also, I've got to mix this up with my hands now. <laughs> oh, no. Not so bright, eh, Graham? My Second World War Army lock knife. Wow, that does smell. This has got to be going, it's definitely got to go in the water. It's far better than being in my tackle bag. Look at that. Is that weed or is that a bit of fishy? No, it's terrible, isn't it? Just like this. Wow, look at the oil popping up on that. That is very oily. That could go in as well. That's like a cookery program. Rubbish home. I've got more rubbish in there from other people than I have my own. How hard is that, people? I don't know why people... I don't know, it's never... It's always beyond me why people just don't take their rubbish home. They, they generally bring it in a bag. Or well, take it back in a bag. A lot of fisheries even provide you waste bins. Oh, that's sweet. That one is on the money. There's no point me not using this. It's got to go. Got to go. One over there. And one over there. Wash hands. I want to get my hands taken off by a catfish smelling this. I'd actually forgotten. How cosy it was. Oh, here comes the rain. <laughs> it better be cosy, because that's really early. The rain's not due to start till four. It's spitting. I just heard it on the top of this. Anything I've got out there is going to have to come in. It's coming out of that cloud there. I mean, it's a horror story of rain they're given, guys. You're probably on a blank. I'm probably on a blank, but I've got to try. It's not down to water temperature. Water temperature's fine. Got to give it a go. Actually, it's very, very good for. I think I used it a couple of times before freshwater fishing, but we'll find out later on what it's like. I've had it on beaches in storms. Trust me, it is a storm shelter. But it's tall. You see, I can, sit, I can sit up in here, no problem at all. It's nice and wide at the front, not stumbling out of some bivy, falling over bed chairs and everything like that. And you're not like this where it's squashed. It's high, look, it's really high. I can, I can, I could hang my bait up there if I wanted to, if I was staying overnight. And in the summer, I could stay overnight in this. There's no question, I could stay overnight. Summer, even maybe autumn. It's got, uh, just so you know, I'll give you, I'll give you a run through of it. Let me put it. It's got these here. I mean, on a beach, look, you're going to get way worse 
way worse weather you're going to get on the on the shore than you are on a lake but I mean I haven't probably got this set up right but it does if I get it all undone go round and then clip around here like this so if there's a side wind coming in there if there's a, like a side wind coming in you can you've got a strap here look you can peg that way out there if I put my foot there look way out there make it even bigger undo the other side it's worth knowing for beginners you can go and spend a small fortune on a bivvy or if you're not really just say fishing late or you're fishing in iffy weather these are way easier to pack up than bivvies I can assure you I don't think they're that expensive now if I rigged it properly you could actually probably join it in the middle there you go that's velcro both ways there's a, there's a strap to peg it out like that get it out at an angle and I can still get out can't I I can still get out beach fishing you need to watch your rod top so generally guys have these like that so they can look out and see their rods up like this but bite indicators buzzers as I call them don't really matter you know they're just going to go beep 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 they, they, they let you know when there's fishing on it is, uh, is on the end so that is one of these shelters pretty cool been grateful to have these on many beach trips cameras dry in here look at the space I've got loads of, loads of space foods here tackles there I can put tackle under there I've got tackle box here and you put shingle on this on the beach on this flange this edge on the top so I'm going to reverse it it's like if you were on the outside you could do that you curve it the other way and fill it up with shingle and it absolutely locks it down then so a handy piece of kit on one which I'm pretty well grateful for and we'll see what it's like today I've seen bubbles coming up I've seen the odd little tiny fish just flick and jump dimples on the surface so it looks fishy but you always think I should really wind one of the catfish rods in and go float fishing for bream or something but I've got, I want to catch catfish so I've got my, my rods out just for catfish but when you see bubbles and that you think are they catfish are they bream are they perch what are they what's out there but it is one of those games where it is big baits, catfish, or nothing. I feel, being superstitious, there's something missing. Did I put the wrong shirt on today? I've got a hat over there. Maybe you should put the peak cap on. I've got the jacket, but, they're, but I think they're both Mike's. It's got Mike's name on it there. The jacket's definitely far too clean for me. That must be Mike's one. A TA fishing hoodie or jacket is far too clean to be mine. I think I'm going to put it on, guys, just in case, because I've not had a sniff at the moment. It's not, it could, might not be a lucky. It's a Bisbee's black and blue. That's Marlin, Tournament, Cabo and Lucas. I covered one, I was flown out there and covered a competition out there once for blue and black Marlin for a big magazine, not a fishing magazine proper magazine, I want to say proper magazine, big circulation magazine and I think the guy I was with, I was doing some of the photography the journalist I was with, he was on another boat, he was on the winning boat and, and they have huge prize money there, I want to say I'm not being joking, a million dollars first prize where he catches the biggest fish over about three days and this is definitely too clean to be, anybody wants to support us? There you go, you can get clothing from Mike, I don't do anything with the clothing, Mike does all that, all that merch stuff. There's hoodies, jackets, we'll just check it, see if he's left any money in there. No, no, he wouldn't leave any money in there. Anyway, keep that in the dry. I'll leave the hat on because it was lucky in the black and blue Marlin tournament, the Bisbee tournament. So, might be lucky here, who knows. I want to see a beep or a tug or something. Nothing on those roach. I think it's getting close to a recast. You think we got bad weather? Goodness me. Over in the south coast, 2020 as I do this, they got a hurricane going through. I thought I saw this morning 185 mile an hour gusts. That's horrific. Wait for this. A 20 metre was it? It can't be. It wouldn't be 20 metres. It'd be 20 foot. I think it was a 20 foot tide surge. 20 foot. That's as high as a bungalow. They said it's uns unsurvivable and it's going inland for 40 miles because it's a delta area. Don't forget, it's a flat delta area, so it's going to whoosh straight up there. And I'm worried about a bit of a storm or rain coming in for this afternoon and evening. 
I'm trying, I'm trying to picture 20 metres. That's 60 feet. Now that's four storeys, Grammy. It's definitely 20 foot tidal surge. So 20 foot, those are 12 foot, those are two. It's nearly the height of the tree over there. <laughs> this is tidal. I'll be underwater. <laughs> Still be fishing. That's right people, <laughs> it's the point of no return. If I pack up or I soaked, if I stay I soaked or so please I bought the beach shelter. I want to say it's toasty in here but it's okay, it's fine. I'm dry, everything else is dry inside and this is it. I've been watching the planes go over and they're obviously on a flight path and they start disappearing you know earlier and earlier where the cloud levels dropping, temperatures dropped, gone down about five degrees. So it's pretty nippy. I don't even want to look out that way. I'll peep round the corner for you. I had a little taggy beep on the on the luncheon meat, and I had a beep on uh, the dead roach. I've got no chance of putting a tripod up in here. If I do hook up, I'm going to get soaked. Oh well. Got to be in it to win it. On the way the four. Oh, there we go. One beep on that one. It could be a raindrop. Sometimes you get a single beep. It's a raindrop on the line that's hitting the line, or it's actually hitting the bobbin and just makes it go one beep. One beeps I'm not really bothered about. You know, you want two or three, it, it would be probably be a something having a go at the bait. Well, uh, I could have put my brolly up. You see, I've got the brolly outside as an anchor or on the edge. The trouble is, you get cold, you get the wind underneath. But this thing is sealed up in here. Look, give me a 360, there's a 360 of the beach shelter, soon to be manufactured in idiot proof green which everybody must have green you've got to have green 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 well i like orange and gray i'll be happy with a pink one as long as it keeps me dry I think it's time I drew the curtains, people. Wowee. I sort of want to fish, but I don't want to fish. I want to bite, but I don't want to bite. Well guys, it's, uh, I'm getting cold now because I've been out three times, I've had three takes, one I didn't feel that was on the, on the fish, and two others that go up and down, up and down, up and down, eventually went up, the rod pulled round, struck, one was on for a second, holy cow, one was on for a second, gone, just kicked once, gone, didn't feel like a big fish, just had another one just now, rub pulled round, sprang back. I'm on the bait run, I normally sit right next to them with um, locked up straight on the reel strike. So they, whatever it is, is just barely picking up on the lips and moving off with it. I'm just trying to warm up, it's just beeped again. A tip, take a bin liner with you. <clears throat> I carry one anyway in case it gets like weather like this and I don't have a shelter. I could put my camera bags in here, but sooner or later I'm going to get a screaming take here and even if I don't I've got to go out to recast. So get yourself a bin liner like this, it might just help you. I had this once out in uh, Costa Rica in the Tortuguera National Park in the jungle there. Unbelievable rain and luckily the guy 
saved our bacon, the guide. We were fishing for tarpon, throwing plugs out in a storm. I thought I saw, thought that uh, I'd get electrocuted. All the howler monkeys stopped in the jungle. I thought, that's gone very quiet. And then the heavens opened rain like I've never seen before. So, you get a sort of Rambo knife. Think of Rambo in the film, First Blood. I'm going to use a pair of scissors. You've got the open end, the sealed end. You want about the width of your head to squeeze over, to squeeze over, okay? So I'm just going to cut down here about, mind you, you've got quite a big head, haven't I? Just got to get through there. Okay. Then I'm going to cut across the top. I'm shaking when I got so cold and wet. That goes down there. Okay, then I sort of measure myself about here. Shoulders. I'm going to make a couple of little splits just in here. Wow. Once you start getting cold and you get shivery, that's a problem. That's when you can get hypothermia. It's just a tip, it might, I'm going to say it's going to save your life, it might do one day, you don't know. And the quality of bin liners now, you want to get a trash can liner, a proper trash can liner. That's it. They're much thicker, they're much thicker, you know, the ones that take the whole, whole liner. Okay, put the scissors back, hat back. I'm going to have to take the mic off to do this, guys. This mic is not going outside anyway. If I hook a fish, you might see it, you might not. You have a, a full size bin liner, we call them in the UK. Here we go, guys. Now, if you have a full size bin liner, if you have a now, if you have a full size bin liner like you get in the UK, right, it goes right down over your legs as well. You cut off the bottom edge rim, right, and you can tie that around your waist as well. Whack. It. A, oh, it's coming right in. The wind's changed. What's really stuck me, guys, the wind has caught it right round. It's blowing straight in here. I can't move the shelter. It's staked down. I'm going to try and get my umbrella. Get out there and get my umbrella. Cause I won't get, get, I've got the cameras getting wet now. Hang on a minute, people. It's all going pear-shaped. Water coming in. You can see the principle of it. I'm still going to get soaking wet, but it might just keep my central body and see my core body temperature up a little bit. I'm in a mess. I wish it was thicker plastic. I don't really want to go out there, but I might have to go and get my umbrella. Try and stake it up and the wind will probably take me away like Mary Poppins. I've lost another one, guys. I struck with the back wind on in the rain and, the, and it went into an enormous bird's nest. So what I've done now is I've taken the risk. I'm a, well, about four feet away from the rod. I normally sit right next to them. I've jury rigged up the umbrella over the top here. It is pouring off it. The downside I didn't tell you is that when you have these uh, bin liners on, it runs down your back over your butt and you get wet right down the back end. So not good when you're sitting down. That's why you need the full length, full length one. I've got beeps there. The wind's coming up and they're sure to blow my umbrella away. Happy days. I don't think I've had a day like this for a long, long time. All I need now is to take on this right hand rod because it's locked and loaded. I have got it on backwind. And I think the last one might have been a, 
a good catfish. It's light over there, and yet peeping around here under my brolly, there is a stack of rain. And I can't work out which way the wind's blowing now, it's turned around. I just hope I can actually stand up now, I hope the umbrella. Oh, happy days, the umbrella's leaking as well, so I've got double leaks. Look at the holes in it over there. What idiot would have an umbrella with holes in it? That's right. As you can see down there, I'm gradually filling up the barrow with water. Well, if I do get a catfish, I'll be able to stock it in there, wouldn't I? Wheel it around and show it to, well, look, nobody. Look, look at this guys, 20 minutes and after two hours of solid storm, it's settled down. I'm, well, I should have gone home, I couldn't go home with all that rain. I'm going to push it even farther guys. I'm going to have a bit of a cook up here. I've got my uh, cookers down here, got my wok and into the wok, wait for this. I'm going to have a fry up if I can balance it. Bit of cooking oil is going in there. You watch one of these rods go off. A little bit of cooking oil. I'm going to do some tomatoes. Now, these are not just any old tomatoes, I will have you know. These are grown by my own fair hand. Let's just get my pen knife out. This is very sharp. That's all I need to cut myself, isn't it? Now, let's put them on a plate. This could work or it could be yet another disaster. These are very, very nice tomatoes, these ones. I say that because it's taken me all year to grow them. I've eaten three already. <laughs> I'm lucky to have two left. That's right, that's some knife. Anybody know the name of it? Looks a bit military to me. It's got that sort of military, it's a lock knife as well. Saw for sawing yourself free from here. Help, let me out. You, you know if I go screaming out of here, I'm going to kick all this all over trying to get these rods because these are now unlocked and loaded. They're just on back wire. They're not that bait runner. I only bait run a fish for carp. That's all I do. I normally sit right there between the two rods, short drop back like that, and I just straight on the reel, straight on full drag, strike, and load up. I feel it's not going to happen tonight, but I have had my chances. Now, it might be a bit rustly because I'm sitting in a bin liner over my head, so um, you have to bear with me. The fat's in there. I've got my tomatoes. What else is going in? I can tell you, no, not the lunch of meat. That's for the fish, or possibly. I'm having here lemon and garlic, king prawns, succulent prawns, cooked. Was it coated? coated in a tasty lemon and garlic marinade. OMG, with my tomatoes and some potatoes here. New potatoes, we could have some fun. That's right guys, I'm hardly likely to die of starvation. Don't go off yet. Smith, watch that bobbin. Mabel, come and do the cooking. There's a woman's flares, Mabel. Oh my god, the smell off of these. I don't try them more. Well, oh my god, garlic. Oh, no wonder there's nobody in the swim next to me. Uh, uh, hello, how are you? Mm. Don't go off yet. Smith, watch that bobbin. Mabel, come and do the cooking. There's a woman's flares, Mabel. Oh my god, the smell off of these. I don't try them more. Well, oh, oh, garlic. Oh, no wonder there's nobody in the swim next to me. Uh, uh, hello, how are you? Mm. Take two. Let's try one of these. 
garlic. Mmm. Hello. How are you? No wonder there's nobody to swim next to me. Mmm. Look at it, it's unbelievable. I'll just show you why that's burning. Look, what's this blue sky about? And I don't see the wind's blowing this way now. When I turned up, the wind was here. That's why you think I've set this up with the opening this way. The storm came and whoosh, it came in there. I feel a blank, guys. I've sort of enjoyed myself in some weird, sick way. Look, this is my camp. Welcome to my home. Welcome to my chair. I could survive anywhere, chaps. Especially eating like this. In we go. Pawns as well. Well, the smell is worth coming here just for that garlic as well. Come on. Oh, Jesus. Missed him again. Oh, for Christ's sake. That's five in a row like that, guys. Oh man, that was a sickener. Gee, God, what? And that was on a small piece of lunch, mate. I'm going to have to eat this now. Oh, would have been nice to hook that up. You probably saw the run anyway. Does that not look good, people? Look at that. Look at that juice. I should have bought a, a little French loaf, some bread, just to mop up that juice. Right. I'm not, I've had such a bad day. I'm not even casting that one out yet. I'm going to eat my meal first. And serve. Oh, oh, oh look at that. There's only one survivor. There we go, people. That there, folks, with that setting, is missing only one thing. A fish. Man sits in thunderstorm eating the equivalent of Spanish food, wearing <coughs> a designer bin liner. All you other guys on YouTube copying, copy this one, go out and fish in a bin liner. Mm. And do a cook up as well, while you're at it. Well, I'll tell you what boys, this will be one I'll be doing again. This could be on the, on the beach scene. I made one bad mistake, no bread, and also, I should most definitely have ordered a can of beer with my wife. Well, currently I've survived the storm. We just hope there's no more rain coming. I've got one hour's fishing to try and salvage something out of this. This is my setup umbrella. It's a new thing. This could be a fashion. Look at this, people. Most carp fishermen would never be seen dead in there with that old chair a beach shelter and a 40 year old, I think it's FG Co the make, fishing umbrella over the top. Coupled to a man wearing <laughs> a bin liner. But I'm dry. Well, my head's not, but the rest of me is. So, left hand rod, can change the lunch of me. I'm have one more cast with it, we're just moving it around all the time. You can see there's like a tinge of colour. We had so much rain there, look. There's a tinge of colour, it's washed in the mud. You'd think it would perk them up, but it apparently hasn't. And I'm not altogether sure I've had one take on the roach, in fairness. I've had no takes on the, over there on that side. This side, down here, I'll turn around. I've had, what, four? Four in a row? Was it five, the one you saw? I strike, nothing. One I hooked, didn't feel a big fish. You know, four or five pounds, you can't tell catfish you can hook them generally they come up solid but you know sometimes they bang 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 and then you start to load up on them but you know this there are smaller catfish in there so like five pounders in there as well but but I'm set anyway and I'll probably bring my chair out in a minute and sit in between the two and if it goes up I'm gonna nail it but I've got one hour I think I'll pack the brolly away and take a gamble well guys it doesn't look like it's gonna be happening I've had quite a few beeps on this rod so as you can see the Sun is a going down Hard to believe that major storm. I survived it now. So I feel real disappointed I couldn't get you guys a fish, I really do. I, I just thought, you know, 
thundery weather. Could be good for catfish, got to give it a go. Obviously, I bit off a bit more than I could chew, and the fish didn't chew anything. So, we'll see you guys. See what I mean? Two beeps, nothing. Really annoying. We'll see you guys in the next film. Hopefully, we'll be able to catch a fish for you. I've had a sort of bizarre enjoyment out of today. I've sort of survival type of thing. I've really, uh, you know, sort of enjoy it. Sort of, sort of. I won't enjoy it if it comes over and rains again. So I'm going to have to pack up, get the gear away, get the old, this thing's been a godsend. Leaking or otherwise, they've been really good. It's kept my body temperature up because with the sides, it keeps the wind off. We'll see you again in the next film. Hit the subscribe button, both, both channels. As TA Fishing, TA Outdoors, and I'm just watching that last of the sun go down there. Listening to the odd one single beeps, no single toners. And it's packing up time. See you in the next film. Guys, I'm on, I'm on, I'm on. I'm packing my gear up, I'm on. Sorry about that people, I just had a major seriously mental breakdown moment. I had a really good catfish on, I don't even know if you saw it filming. Hooked up, got him coming, in the rushes, something's gone, hook pulled, popped, I don't know. Really, really pleased, really pleased. That would have salvaged it, I'm packing all my gear up, away it goes, solid hook up, lunch and meat. <sighs> just chill Graham, just chill man, it's only a fish. I've only been here 11 hours in the rain. Sorry, I'm sorry. You think I'm upset because I've lost, what was it, five or six catfish in a row? I'm, I'm just upset, I'm so sorry that I couldn't find enough swear words to use in 30 seconds. I was furious, I was livid. All that time, all the rain getting wet. Look, you serious fishermen out there, you know what it's like. You just wait, and that was so last knocking. My gear was packed away, you could see it. Just turned around, loaded up on the fish. Just about got it under control before it nearly getting dragged in the water. Full drag. Oh, don't even go there. But, furious as I was, and I'm still now, thinking about it, I went back for another go. Oh yes, GP does not give up that easily. So, I was just rigging up a trace. I think this one's gone up the bushes and pulled him out of the way. Have to recast this. So see what I've got there, just cross hook lunch and meat. And that might be the way forward. Because that had two or three goes of that lunch of meat. And I think just putting it on back wine. Held that hook there for a second till I could get to the rod. Wow. 
Well guys, I'm back at Finch. If you think I'm giving up after spending all that time trying to catch a catfish and losing it, it's got to be worth another go. It's got to be worth another go. So I'm set up here. I've got my rods round to the right, one over by the rushes there. I'm trying to use this as a screen because I haven't bought my umbrella with me, unfortunately. But I do stupid things like if I get a take of all my stuff I'm sorting out here, right in the way I want, I want to get to the rod, so I've got to get myself more organised. I'm shocking, really, but it's got to be worth a shout. I haven't done a cook... Is that wind? It's pretty windy, but it's a warm wind. Um, I'm not doing a cook-up, I'm just bringing sandwiches. I'm just having a few hours. I've been working hard this morning doing all that stuff, hedges and stuff. So, fingers crossed, I might get a hook-up. I might get some revenge. I still think, looking at the sky, I should have bought an umbrella I just rushed and forgot, unfortunately. But still, one of these bobbins go up, I'll be well happy, especially if I stay hooked to it. And yes, by the way, by the way, that is a beach wheel you're looking at over there. That is £20 line minimum on there. That might be 25 I think that's 18 or 20 uh, on a twin speed reel there. So, as the saying goes, I'm loaded for bear. Guys, I've got all hooked up first cast. I've been fighting for a few minutes. I think I've got them in close enough to have a chance. Okay. Obviously, could lose at any time. I've been playing him way out and I've got a chunk of weed on which is not good. Come on, we just need a break. I don't like the big piece of weed on there. Not much I can do about it, obviously. Oh, it's a huge amount of weed. This is a nice fish. This is a rocket of a fish. Let's get this lead out of the way. I hope the camera's running this time. Just hope the camera's running. Nick's just there. Oh, it's a nice fish. Are we going to get it? Are we going to get it, people? Oh, wow, beaut. This is a beaut, boys. I've got to get my away from those rushes and just keep him on the surface. Of it. He's gone back one as well. Bloody hell, this rod's bent. Oh, what? Come on, babe, come on, come on, come on, come on, get in there. Oh, yes. Am I owed or am I owed? That's a good show. Let's get him out one of them. As usual. Man, the hook fell out. Don't give these guys any slack line, will you? There we go. One. Big finch farm catfish. Hard to believe this little tail and all this can generate so much power. That was a result. Luncheon meat, cross section hooked, reel on back wine, wallop. I'm going to try and get you best I can on picture wise with this. They are so slimy. Oh, yeah. A result, guys. Big double. Sandy's not a million miles away from high doubles. 16 2, boys. That will do nicely. There he goes. Reverse is off and away. Well there you go people, I hope you enjoyed that. It's passed a bit of time with this awful lockdown we've had. I've done the best for you. I didn't catch fish right until the next day. But that first day was something else, wasn't it? Oh, I haven't had many bad days like that for a long time. Anyway, just go to show you, don't give up. We all need a bit of hope and it paid off for me. In fact, 
I had another fish before that. I had a double figure catfish that I pressed the camera off instead of on. But I didn't explode into abusive language because I actually got the catfish. What a good job I pressed the right button in this last one. Guys, we'll see you next time. Look out for TA Fishing and don't forget TA Outdoors. Hit the subscribe buttons on both channels and look out for the old, the old merch. The old merch that's out there and Mike does all that. We'll see you guys next time. Hopefully, some more fish. Thank you.